This week's video is a throwback to a project I did in April 2022 when I built a synthesizer for Goat Girl, the sequential scan generator. It was a bit of a unique synthesizer because it took the light in the room, scanned it, and turned that into the sound source. This is an unreleased video manual I made for the band because it would have been just far too much information to write down. And in it, I go over all of the sounds and features of the synthesizer, as well as breaking down some of the basic elements of how modular synthesizers work. The original sequential scan generator video is linked up there, and I also did a cover of the Goat Girl song, Sad Cowboy. All of the synth sounds in that are from the sequential scan generator. This video was available to Patreon members a year ago and if you want exclusive access to loads more videos, blogs on what I'm up to and all sorts of different downloads and things, Patreon is the place. There's a series of videos only available on there of me making the sequential scan generator and going through the circuitry in loads more detail and I just put up all the details on how to make your own mechanical gif. Okay, here's the video. So I thought this was the best way to explain how this works because writing all this down would take a long time and it's just too confusing, there's too much going on. The best way is to just follow along with this, plug things in, twist knobs, pause the video as you go to play with stuff and you'll, you'll figure it out that way just by listening to it. You don't need to know all the fancy terms and stuff. I'm going to talk a lot about voltages and gates and triggers and stuff but I'll try and make it like as little jargon as I can. The thing that this does, which is different to other synthesizers, is it has this light scanner here, which is like the main way that it makes the sound. And then there's other sections here that shape that sound. So it's semi-modular, which means if you want to, you can get these patch cables and plug them in to these and switch things around or put extra stuff into it or out of it but it can be used just on its own so without anything plugged into these jacks here there's internal connections between all the different modules in the synthesizer so they're called normaled connections and when you put a jack in, you break the normal connection and that will mean somewhere down the line you've broken the connection in the circuit so you might not hear something coming out of a later stage of the synthesizer because you've broken the circuit with the jack, if you see what I mean. So that's something to just know about if you're expecting it to make sound and it's not making sound, it might be a reason why. So I'm going to start with the first section here, which is this top bit, which is the controller for the light scanner. Let's just listen to it. So that's the most basic sound that you'll get out of it. And you'll hear, if I move this near the lamp that's up here, um, you'll hear the sound of it changing. So there's a reason for that, and it's pretty easy to get your hand around, but we'll go into it later once we get to the sequencer part here, because it's easier to explain then. But uh, just to change like the character of the sound, all you have to do is just change the light that's falling on these phototransistors, which are here in a line. And you could do that with like a phone light, anything. Um, it's not super, super sensitive, because that would be annoying. It would mean that the synth would sound like it's turning on and off all the time. Best way to do it is to put it to like a bright light um, and then you'll get like the biggest change in the sound. And I haven't tried it, but like I think it'd be pretty cool with like stage lights and stuff because it would be reactive to them. Um, so yeah, that would be kind of cool. Uh, yeah, it's not very interesting on its own, that sound. Um, so let's go through the controls here and make it a bit more interesting. First one here is a rotary switch and that switches octaves. And 
it goes down really low, like lower than you would really want to use. Um, but later on, we'll show you how you can use this not for sound, but as a controller. And that's why you want the really slow, um, low pitched sound. Um, yeah, it goes all the way down to there. But you're just like literally hearing clicks. Um, I don't know, it could be musical for something, but next to it is. Yeah, well, you know what that is. Um, and then these two jacks here, they're labelled different, but they're actually exactly the same. Um, that stands for control voltage, CV. That stands for frequency modulation. Both the same thing. Um, so you can plug in an external controller and that can control the pitch. What that's doing, that is sending out different voltages depending on where I've set these potentiometers here and that is corresponding to the pitch of uh, this scanning section. Um, so good to differentiate between different types of signal that come out of and go into synthesizers and they're all actually the same which is the really cool thing which is um, so you can use audio signals which is, you know, audio, sound and stuff, um, you can slow that right down, or we don't even have to slow it down, and use that as a control signal for something. It's all just voltages, so you can send them into other different things and do magic stuff with it. You'll see, you'll see. Where was I? Yeah, so this is just sending voltages to this, which is controlling it. Um, control voltage, yeah. It's calibrated to be one volt per octave. So if you send in one volt, the pitch is going to go up one octave. So if you send in two volts, it's going to go up two octaves. So that way, you can have two different pieces of equipment made by totally different people, and they'll talk to each other, and everything will be in tune nice. Um, there is, underneath this sticker here, the frequency sticker, there's two holes, just like this one. And that is for setting the calibration you shouldn't have to worry about it get in touch with me if it goes horribly like out of tune or something weird it's all like analog circuitry and stuff so like it can do weird stuff um, and uh, i'll include a screwdriver it's just a little uh screw in there that you turn to set it it's dead easy to do um but yeah just tell me if it gets out of tune and i'll tell you how to do it but it's not worth worrying about underneath here if you look inside there, there's a little screw in there, and that is like the master tune. I mean, you don't have to worry about it, but if you were gonna use this in like a more serious setup with like MIDI controllers and stuff, you'd wanna tune it so like, when you set this knob here to the bottom, that's exactly a C, you know, so that you know it's gonna be in tune when you get on stage and stuff. Um, and that's how you do that. That's the, like the master tune in there. Um, okay, so I think that pretty much does that section. This scan out is literally just like the raw output from this. Um, so you don't really want to use that. Uh, you could use it if you want to for like um, listening to it, like audio. That's more for when we get to like the control signals that you can do with this. So better to use out of the filter, which is the next section that it goes into. Scan out internally is wired to the filter in. But this can be its own little module right there. You don't have to use any of the rest of it. If, for instance, you could uh, take a signal out of, like I've got an oscillator here, I can send it into the input. So that's what the filter does, it's a low pass filter. So it lets the low frequencies pass and cuts off the highest, just like a treble knob on a stereo, you know? Um, yeah, that's like, that's the best knob on the whole thing, <laughs> you know? If you go 
like low low pitch you can do like the dubstep yeah but um this is mainly on there because there's like i won't go into why it is because it's boring but like there's uh, like there's you'll hear like a lower pitch tone from this scanner and you'll hear a higher pitch tone from the scanner and sometimes you won't want the higher pitch tone so this just you just bring it down and it'll filter it out i'll show you what i mean so can you you can hear the low note and there's a higher like whiny note above it where you can just Kind of filter it out with that so that's what that's useful for now next section that it goes into the filter out is wired into the low pass gate audio input here um, so now if I listen to the low pass gate output so the low pass gate what it's doing is controlling the volume of it so we got this section which is doing the like basic sound this little section which is like shaping the character of it um, making it softer or harsher and then this section which is doing the volume of it so we're starting to like get to a sound now that sound has like the components of like a normal instrument like a trumpet or something do you know what i mean like it's got pitch it's got timbre and now it's got like dynamics um and we're just building it up into like an instrument so this low pass gate also has kind of combined with it a thing called an envelope generator which is just a way of controlling how the volume goes up and down whether it goes up and down suddenly or whether it goes up and down smoothly and that's controlled with this attack and release um, so attack is how quick the, the sound goes up uh, turns up in volume and release is how quickly it goes down in volume when it's triggered by whatever goes into this gate input so the gate input tells the low pass gate when the sound is going to be on and off and then these two uh, shape the kind of the envelope of that on and off whether it's sharp on or softly on so I'll see if I can set up a sound where I can uh, hear that in action So there, there's a sound that goes on quite fast and off quite fast. Turn the reverb off. Now, if I turn the attack up, it should get softer. So it's fading up. And then if I do the release longer, it's gonna fade down slowly. Now, the classic like low pass gate sound that you'll get in like Buchler synths and stuff, the way to get that is with this little switch here. It switches between the two different modes of the low pass gate. So this upwards is attack release. So that means that you get to play with this knob here. Attack decay, this knob doesn't do anything. It just really sharply on uh, and it gives it like a really distinctive sound, especially when you put the release up.
D mode, attack decay, this knob doesn't do anything. Remember that. And it goes on and off when a signal goes into the gate section. At the moment, this sequencer is controlling the gate, but I can control it with this, for example. So, if I press play on this thing, just take the pitch out of there. So you just hear, so you see the clock here. Oops, turn it off. So you can see the clock flashing on this sequencer here. If I turn it down. So every time the clock, the gate output from here, goes out, that will trigger this low pass gate to turn on. If you call that, there's a specific type of control signal, it's called a gate. Um, so with pitch, it's like continuous, it's just basically like this knob, you know, it just smoothly goes across the frequencies. <clears throat> with a gate, it's either on or off. So if the voltage goes above 5 volts, it's on. If it goes below 5 volts, it's off. There's a whole load of detail to go into there that's too boring. Um, but like different synth manufacturers have different standards and stuff. I just use 5 volts. Uh, I actually use like 3.3 volts. But um, <laughs> I'm waffling now. <laughs> See, I'm trying to make this not too boring not too like complicated and in the mud but like there is a lot to it but you can dive into it if you want to but if you don't want to just twiddle some knobs it's fine um okay so i hope that's clear um yeah and actually and when you start combining this stuff that's when it gets really cool because you've got this controlling the gate which is triggering every single time one of these steps it goes through one of these steps here and depending on where these knobs are depends on the pitch that's sent out of this cv output into the cv input of the scanner control and then then you're getting turn the filter up different octave And then, you know, change the uh, change the release. Change the clock speed on here. Add a bit of reverb in. Yeah, and then it starts to get a bit more interesting. Um, so we don't need to use this because we've got our own sequencer in here. It's an eight step sequencer. You can see eight potentiometers here, eight knobs. So just like this knob here was flashing, this has got its own clock. That is internally wired to this clock in jack. So you can plug in your own clock and use that externally, but it's got its own inbuilt clock, which is just the speed that it switches between across these steps. It goes left to right and then comes back. The way you turn the sequencer on to start it stepping is just put this run switch up and it will go through the steps. You can control the speed of that internal clock with this knob here and you can also control how many steps it has. So that's eight steps. It can go all the way down to just having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Um, which you can get pretty creative for that. The uh, other side of this switch, this run switch, if you put it in the middle position, it just stops the clock. Um, is like a manual advance. So you push it down once and it does one step. And I find that really useful. Um, that's the way I did a lot of like the melodies on the Sad Cowboy cover. 
um, <clears throat> because you use these knobs here to set the pitches of notes and then you manually advance through them. If you hold the switch and you're in AR mode, it will turn on the low pass gate section for as long as you're holding this and then turn it off. If it's in AD mode, it just takes a little blip from the start and it doesn't matter how long you hold this, it will just, it will just blip it at the start. Yeah, like I'm say like I said at the start, you probably want to like keep pausing the video and trying these things out for yourself. And then you you'll get a get the gist of it. Um Okay. So we got up to run. The speed of the steps is controlled by the internal clock, which is internally wired to this uh jack here, and you control the speed of it with this and the amount of steps. with that. Now, there's a slightly more complicated part of this, which is the clock duty. So that just means, because we're using the clock, the on and off signal that is switching these, also as our gate signal, clock duty is just a setting of how long the clock is on versus when it's off. And that's just like us doing our manual advance here, holding the switch. So it's just how long the clock is held on every time it uh, advances. And that affects how long, obviously, the low pass gate is held on, just the same way as it is when you hold the manual advance switch down. So let's see if we can listen to that. And again, this won't do anything when it's in a D mode because it's just getting the first little blip from it. It's not really listening to us holding anything. I hope this is making sense. Um, it will make a lot more sense when you just play with it and you'll, you'll get it. Um, so, here we go. So right now, the clock duty is all the way down. So it's every time the clock goes on, da, 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 it's um, just putting a little blip of on. Now if I turn this up, it'll hold on for longer. Did you hear that? Yeah. Let's talk about what's coming out of these knobs here. So you can hear that these are controlling the pitch of this scan generator. If I change these, you'll change the pitch of the sequence. And if you have only one step, you can use this. Like that. What they're doing is every time these are selected, they're sending a voltage to this sequencer output here. That normally is wired to this CV input. So that's why it's controlling the pitch of this section. Um, but it doesn't have to go there. It can go anywhere. So. Uh, you could, let's see, if I listen to this oscillator here and I send this sequencer out to control the pitch of this one. Uh, why is it not doing that? Uh, see, even I get tripped up with this. Oh, because it's one step, it's only on one step, isn't it? 
There you go. So this is controlling this now. And uh, equally, you can control, you can break the connection here by plugging a jack in either one of these and control and control a picture this with an external thing. Now we get to a really cool bit. Now we get to a really cool bit and you'll understand how this works. So, you know I was saying earlier that the different types of signals that they use in like synthesizers, they're all actually just the same. They're at like different speeds though. Well, this is like a control signal that we're sending out here because it's quite slow, you know? Du, 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 du. Like the audio oscillations that you listen to, the, when a speaker moves in and out and vibrates the air and then that vibrates your eardrum, that's happening hundreds of times a second, if not thousands. Um, so if we speed this up so that it's cycling through all of these hundreds of times a second, um, you will hear a tone. So if we just listen to this output now, going slow, all you're hearing is clicks. That's just the speaker moving, duh, 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 just pushing air, and you're just hearing it as a click. But if you start speeding it up, you will get like a musical tone. Um, and the way you do that is you switch the internal clock source. So, at the moment, when this switch is down, the clock source is being controlled by this tempo here. Now if you switch it up, this section here is controlling the speed of this sequencer. Now if I set this to two, and I put this knob all the way down, and this knob all the way up. Now, if you look on my oscilloscope here, you will see you've got the first knob here, you've got the second knob here, you've got a low signal and a high signal, and it's switching between those hundreds of times a second. And that's what makes the vibrations in the air what you hear in your eardrum. Um, so, if you turn this knob down, that equals the volume, the amplitude of the wave, the waveform. And that's the simplest waveform that you can get, a square wave. You can see why it's called a square wave. Um, now, and uh, I'll show you on the oscilloscope actually, as you go up and down in pitch. So it's like a graph on here. So going up, that's voltage or amplitude, and going across, that's time. So if I turn the frequency on here up, you will see this moving on there so it's turning on and off quicker which means it's going up in pitch um yeah that's pretty simple now so we got we understand now how to make oscillations in voltage which then control a speaker to move out which then control the move the air which then moves your ear and if you move more air you have a higher voltage difference between the high and low levels, you can turn up the volume of the sound. And if you do that quicker, that's higher in pitch. But now the cool bit is how you make it sound different, the like timbre of it, the character of the sound. Um, and what you have to do for that is add in more of these steps. And you can hear like the character of the sound is different. It's because you're adding in like harmonics and overtones to it. Um, and the more steps that you add in, the more complex it gets and more interesting it gets. And all I'm doing 
is just moving these around. And so you can see, basically, what we're doing is scanning through all of these potentiometer settings really, really fast. But well, that's exactly the same thing what we're doing on this scanner here, except instead of knobs that you can twist, we've got these photo sensors which are sensitive to light. And uh, depending on the light level that falls on each one of these photo transistors, is it's just like twisting up one of these knobs knobs all down knobs up and down <laughs> yeah sorry a bit tired today <laughs> and then we control the overall pitch of everything with this so if i send in a signal from this sequencer so send in the cv control from the pitch setting the pitch of the oscillator with these knobs on this sequencer going into the cv control here this is controlling how fast it's switching between these steps. I'm moving these, and now they're changing the shape of the waveform, which is changing the character of the sound. So it's scanning through these and generating a waveform, this is a sequential scan generator. And even better than that, what you can do is take a little cable, take it out of the sequencer output, put it in to the filter input, and then you can have filter the sound on top of that. even better than that you can take it out of the low-pass gate and then if you take the clock signal from this sequencer and put that into the gate input here that's going to turn the gate on and off see on here what a filter does it just smooths out the sound so there's a square wave now if I turn the filter down it rounds it off it makes it like a smoother sounding waveform and then that sounds harsher yeah pretty cool and you can like shape and sculpt sounds that way. Um, what haven't I talked about? So if you speed up a sequence, you can get a waveform. And equally, if you slow down a waveform, you can get a sequence. So now you can see how these two things are basically the same, just running at different speeds. And you can use this as a controller, a CV controller, just like this if you slow it down and go through each one of these steps. If you plug a patch cable into here and send that to the CV input of an other oscillator, it will sound like this. I think that's basically it yeah I mean you can do loads more stuff with it and you can use all of these different sections individually um, with other gear and stuff um, so I think there's a lot there to play with I hope you enjoy it let us know if you have any trouble with that and um, be happy to help all right cool see you later no 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 I forgot the whole thing of going through pedals because it sounds a lot cooler when you put it through pedals yeah or just effects in general all right here we go let's turn it back on okay let's play around with this 
My favourite thing to do is put it through the pitchfork. Uh, I use that loads on the sad cowboy cover. Just put it through like a fifth. fun there. All right, cool.